Guys, welcome back to part two of the series on why I believe that we may have a very good likelihood of seeing more states, just like Illinois, change wholesaling laws going forward, state by state by state. I've already heard from some high-level people, some other states are on the docket, and they're going to be uh, potentially doing this here soon. Will every state make these rule changes? I don't know. Will a lot of them do it? I don't know. When are they gonna do it? I don't know. You asked for my opinion on this, but I know that I've been talking about this for years before, Il before Illinois even did this, and now it's here. And the dam has broken, just like you've seen with other uh, industry models. Look at the pot laws. Once one state does it, it opens a door for other states to do it too. So there's a very good likelihood because of the opinions on the board behind me of what I think is gonna cause this, uh, that we can see this happen state by state more frequently going forward. So it's something you need to prepare for. Now also in 2020, we're gonna be doing more little series, multi-part video uh, series like this to kind of get more complex issues out because some of the things y'all want me to film videos on are gonna require that. As well as I'm gonna hopefully do better to make higher quality videos. Guys, I know the lighting in here is not that great. Um, I promise you I'm going to do a little bit better for you going forward, hopefully. Now, I'm gonna give you my opinion on the board behind me on why I think there's a lot of pressure to change these rules and which ones I think are more likely to cause this in certain states. Now, I've been uh, knowing that this was coming for a long time. I even did some podcasts talking about this. People all rolled their eyes and laughed. Now it's happening. So this is a real issue, guys. This could happen in your state. So just keep an eye out and keep your kind of uh, head on a swivel. And if you feel the pressure coming, you need to start adapting immediately. Long story short, let's dig in. Number one, false promises that cannot be kept from the wholesaler to the seller of the property. And a lot of times this is at a compression point around foreclosure. Now this is where a lot of homeowners and families are being hurt. This is a massive, massive issue. Let's say that this is a homeowner. They have a house for sale. It is not bank financeable, nor do they even have time to sell it to the traditional process with a real estate agent anyways. Let's say they're going to foreclosure in 17 days. They will lose the house. Let's say they have 100K in equity at risk. Now let's say you watched a video off on these fake YouTubers uh, on how to wholesale houses, or you went to some weekend seminar and now you're an expert at the business and you go out there and you tell this person that you're gonna wholesale it or that you're gonna buy their house, but you intend to wholesale it. They have 100K in equity at risk, years of bad credit uh, that they're gonna have to overcome before they can go get another loan and lots and lots of problems coming down the road if this house doesn't close. But you are only thinking short-sighted on how you can get a two or $3,000 wholesale check because that's all you can see. I get it, guys. Some of y'all need the money, but you also have to remember these are real people. These are not chess pieces in a game for you to play with. These are real families just like your family. And you go contract their house, you have not built a buyer's list because the, the, the course that you went through said if you find a good deal, the buyer will show up, right? You market it, market it, market it, market it, market it, and because you could not find a buyer, three or four days before they go to foreclosure, you go back to the homeowner and you say, unfortunately, I cannot buy the house, I'm going to terminate my contract as if it's no big deal for you, which it is not, you lost maybe 50 to $100 of option money, and what you're gonna see now is this person's life completely ruined. Every dollar of equity in that house that, could, that they really could have used to start their life over is gone, and it's just a not nasty nightmare. And these things are happening a lot, and people are not doing what they're saying they're doing. They're making a false promise or a promise that they thought they could keep, and they're failing to close, and people are really getting hurt. Now, another situation where this could be happening is this one. A disruption of the closing process with multiple closings when a wholesale buyer once again, or when a wholesaler once again fails to do what they said they're gonna do because they don't know if they can do what they say they're gonna do because they're making an offer without an unknown, with an unknown outcome behind it on whether or not a buyer is gonna buy the property. And most of them are so new they don't even know if they have a deal or not, but they're going off emotion and feeling instead of data, logic, and reason, and they get a house under contract, and they go out there, they're hoping they can assign it for five to $15,000, and these are why people are getting frustrated with the assignment of contract process and why this has been a big issue on a high level. And let's say this homeowner has $50,000 in equity on the house that you're going to uh, supposedly try and wholesale for five grand. And this is a back-end house that they are looking to buy. Their kids, they need to move in by school start. They have the perfect dream home. It's walking distance to the school that they've always wanted. It's perfect in every single way, but they need to put a large non-refundable earnest money up on or they have to put earnest money down. And this is time sensitive. 
Now you promise them that you're gonna do what you said in your marketing, which is close in seven days or less or whatever you put on there, and you promise them if they work with you and not another investor, that you're gonna do what you say you're gonna do, even though you don't know if you can say what you're gonna do, or even if you don't know if you can perform on what you promised them, and then what happens is, same situation above, you fail to do what you said you're going to do because you didn't build your buyers list correctly and you didn't put enough time in your business ahead of time. You went out there and started just going after sellers, which is not the way you do the business, even though that's being taught out there. And then this transaction falls through. They needed this 50K in equity to bring $30,000 down on their dream home. And now their earnest money is at risk. The house that they need is at risk. They're in a time sensitive, pressure sensitive situation where they need to move during this time to get moved in by school start. Now they don't know what they're gonna do. They may not be able to find another house and it's a giant nightmare. And all you did was terminate the contract and go about your business looking for another house to leave a trail behind you like a tornado, which I don't even think a lot of you guys realize how bad you've affected people's lives. Now, what if you close on it and it goes through? Great, you make a deal happen, you get some money in your pocket, so gets the house sold and everything's great. So, it goes well a lot of times, but you have to understand why there's such a fuss about this all across the country and why there are so many complaints being sent in to the real estate commissions, to the state, local, uh, local and state governments. When you guys fail to do what you say you're gonna do and you destroy a family behind you, it just doesn't stop there. What, do you, what would you do if this happened to you? What would you do if this happened to your mother, your, your sister, uh, your, your grandmother, your father, anybody in your family? It's a problem. You guys need to only do a deal if you think for sure that you have a chance of selling it. Stop contracting houses because you think you may be able to get a $2,000 assignment fee out of it, guys. It's a very big problem right now. People are getting hurt, okay? Number three, this is probably the biggest reason why uh, you're gonna see a lot of rules change. The loss of data, as well as the fight for data, because a lot of these transactions are not closed through the MLS system. They're not recorded by uh, the traditional agent side of the world. NAR has a lot of power, the National Association of Realtors. This has a lot of impact on what's going on right now, from what I understand. <clears throat> now I don't know all the details, but they want a lot more control over the marketplace, as they should as the agent, shy, agent side of the industry should, right? They are fighting investors, and investors are fighting agents. Now to be a real real estate entrepreneur, you should be both sides, both an agent and investor. You guys know my take on this. But agents and investors, switch that around, sorry to confuse you, are fighting for the same inventory. As well as there's a lot of data that's not being recorded. I talked to a top uh, data guy in Houston the other day, and last month he said that there was like 21 and a half thousand houses closed and only about a third of them were actually recorded through the MLS. Now, knowing this individual, I'm sure his uh, information is accurate, but that's a big problem. There is a lot of deals and a lot of trans, or there are a lot of deals and transactions not being recorded, and this is a lot of data out of the marketplace, and if you do not have data, you make inaccurate decisions, plus it's all about control and power. Think about what's going on. Think about who benefits if the rules change and wholesalers are now only allowed to wholesale properties as a licensed real estate agent and run it through a license at a, at a brokerage, right? Think about that. That's one of the big pressures behind this. And so this is also one of the reasons why it's okay because a lot of you should have a license anyways. We'll talk about this on tomorrow's video that who cares, right? Go get your license, not very hard to do so, and just do it the correct way when the laws change and do it the way that they want you to do it. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Number four, this is a big one. This is another reason why a lot of people are getting hurt. If you wouldn't buy it, why are you selling it to someone else? You guys all know some of the big companies in your marketplace, those rip-off wholesale companies, they're giving us all a bad name. They're putting fake numbers on the deals. They're putting inflated numbers on the deals. Say the repair cost is $50,000, they are going to put thirty-five. dollars Say the ARV is $300,000, they are going to put $3 million, right? Whatever it is. We all know that there's unethical people in the business and they prey on the one-tap buyer, meaning they don't want to build an honest business with re repeat business selling properties over and over and over to one person. They're going off a volume strategy. They're going to rip each person off, squeeze every drop out of that deal like an orange, and they don't care, just like a tornado I brought up a second ago, the path of destruction behind them because these people leave the industry anyways. So they're looking for the new investor getting in the business to show them fake numbers, to rip them off and sell the house. And guys, if you wouldn't buy the house yourself, why contract in the first place? Why sell it to someone else? 
You're basically knowing if that deal's not good, that you're trying to make a quick assignment contract or a quick fee on someone who's gonna get hurt. Why would you do that? Seriously, are you that greedy? Ask yourself this, and if you're doing this in your own business, guys, I'm challenging you. Do you care more about yourself or what happens to the community? And I know the answer for a lot of you, unfortunately, but do you really care if you hurt people or not? Because a lot of you have made a lot of money hurting people and it's gonna come back to hurt you. I promise you, later in your life, you will reflect on these things and you will struggle immensely with your emotions as you look yourself in the mirror and you can't look yourself in the eye because of the things that you've done to get to where you got to. You don't wanna gain the whole world but lose your soul on the path to doing so, guys. Do what's honest, do what you do. Uh, to, if, it was, if it's not good for you, don't do it, I guess you say. I guess I could say, right? Just think about it. Uneth unethical activity, fake offers. This is another big problem in the marketplace that wholesaling has allowed to happen. This is one that I really think is a problem, guys. I really advise you, if you're doing this, to think about what you're doing, just kind of what we're talking about. You don't want to lose your soul. How many people are going out there making fake offers where, let's say, five people went out to a house, you know that the other offers ahead of you are 100, 100, 100, 102, 101, right? They're all tight-knit, and you know that you can't make money unless you get it at $95 because those other offers are flippers or uh, rental buyers or whatever. You know that you can't buy the property and make money on it at the price that you have or that you're gonna have to offer it. So you go and make a fake offer. You make an offer with intent, knowing ahead of time that you're gonna do this for 105,000. That homeowner gets super excited because you're the highest offer. They don't know what's going on because they don't have an education in the business. You contract it for 105 and you wait until they're right pinched up to, for, uh, to foreclosure or into another compression point for some reason. And then you come back and you say, unfortunately, Mr. or Mrs. Seller, uh, I have this inspection that I, I, I had an inspector come out and there's all these things that I didn't know were there that I knew were there, but I'm just pretending to, to, to say that right now. And I need you to come down to 95,000 from 105 or I can't close on the house and you're gonna go through foreclosure anyways. This is probably the single most dishonest thing you can do in the marketplace, knowing ahead of time that the only way you're going to get the deal is if you lie to someone, someone, a real person, a real family in your market where you're lying to them to get the house under contract because you're so freaking greedy that you want to lie to them and come back and beat them down on price. If you're doing this, you're just a piece of shit. I'm just, I'm just speaking honestly, guys, just giving you my opinion. And a lot of you probably don't even realize that you're doing something that unethical. You are lying to people in the market, giving them a price that you have no intent on honoring because other people that gave them an honest offer, like let's say I offered a hundred grand and I would have closed on a hundred grand. Now you press this person down to 95. The way I see it is you literally stole five grand from these people because you didn't leave them an option. And to be honest, some of you guys should have legal action brought against you. And a lot of you will in the future if these are licensed real estate transactions. So you need to start thinking about who you are as a person, just to, just to be honest, because this is a big problem. And I really do not like that a lot of people are doing this. In fact, there are a lot of people coaching people to do this. This is not a strategy. This is what scam artists do. This is what scumbags do. And if you're doing this right now, that's all I'm gonna say. Now, competition wants it. Uh, your competition wants this, guys. Just to be honest, uh, investors that take title to properties, flippers, landlords, owner finance investors, they're pushing, pushing this. They don't want a lot of these people, a lot of these new investors coming in the marketplace, stealing inventory out of the marketplace. It is very uh, easy for a few, a few thousand new investors to come in the marketplace to do two or three deals a year that pulls out a lot of inventory and it makes it harder for them to get deals. So to be honest, uh, and I'm not really pushing, moving or changing these rules or laws, I really could care less either way. I'm gonna do what I do regardless, but there are a lot of people I know that are acquisition companies that are linking up behind the scenes, lobbying and helping push this in certain states because they're tired of this, this wave of people that they don't think are principal in the transaction, having no liability, going in the marketplace, making all these wild offers that they can't honor and pulling inventory out of the marketplace. So that's a big issue. And then the last one, guys, and there's more than this, but this is another one. People are getting scammed left and right because this process is uh, very not regulated. And one of the things that's happening, guys, be very careful out there, is people are selling fake contracts. Let's say you see a deal come across Craigslist or an email come across your, uh, your, your email box and you're like, wow, this looks like an amazing deal. It's $5,000 non-refundable and you meet some random person that you've never met outside of a Walmart or McDonald's and they're like, bring a cashier's check and you give them a cashier's check, you sign an assignment contract and you think you got this really good deal and then you find out 
there was never a deal behind it. It's just fake paperwork, but now they have a $5,000 cashier's check. Guys, never give it to them. Give it to the title company, give it to the title attorney, give it to a third party. Somehow protect yourself. And I'm not giving you legal advice, I'm just telling you, this is happening. It's happening a lot more than people think. Think how easy it would be if you're a criminal and you moved into a city in Florida and you did this 20 times and made a quick couple hundred grand. You moved into a different market, you did it again. Moved into a different market, you did it again, you keep bouncing around. It's gonna be very hard to pinpoint you. It's gonna be very hard to track you down. Before you know it, you could have stolen a lot of money. And a lot of you are like, well, wouldn't someone be scared if they're gonna get caught? Think about it, guys. Every single day in this country, someone murders someone knowing that they could get caught. Someone goes on the street corner and sells drugs knowing they could get caught. People do these things with intent, not caring, because their mind is focused on the short-term immediate gratification, and they really don't care about the back-end result or risk of what it could do to their life going forward. And this is happening a lot, so be very, very careful, guys. I know this is a lot of bad stuff, and we don't really like to go over this, but this is the reality of it. I'm not the one saying do this or don't do this. I'm not doing any of this. I don't even wholesale properties anymore. I take title to them all, which I highly recommend that you guys do. But because of a lot of things like this happening and a few more, we just ran a room on the board. This is why there's a lot of pressure to change these rules. And this is why, in my opinion, you can see this start happening and you're going to see states, uh, more states start to gravitate towards changing in the policies. Now, good news is tomorrow or on the next video, we're going to look at a lot of good things coming out about this and why it's going to be a big opportunity and how this can help you in your business and what you can do going forward to capitalize on these changes if this does, which it could, happen in your state. Let's move on, guys. Subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, I'll see you on the next one.